What if we have a dynamic USB microphone, like these things, right? And we have Audacity recording software, and that's about it. Can we make a decent recording, you know, just with this stuff? These microphones, like this, ATR2100, 2005 also, and the Samson Q2U are all excellent performers. They're inexpensive, pretty rugged, which is unusual for a USB microphone, right? And they sound pretty good, so that's kind of cool. So how do we set everything up to record? How would a sound guy approach this situation? Let's check it out. This is a step-by-step -step walkthrough, so you can get recording. We got our USB microphone, Audacity, and our sweet voice recording. We'll cover stuff we need, setting up the microphone, setting up the computer, and setting up the levels. Let's do it. We'll start with stuff we need. All right. We need a few things to pull this off. The first thing is a USB microphone that we were talking about, right? And it comes with a clip, which is probably a weird size, so make sure you've got the right one. You need the USB cable, that's pretty obvious, to plug it in, and that should have whatever is on your computer on the other end, hopefully, or something. I'm sure you can figure it out. How about a stand or something? Here's a desktop stand that works okay. Boom arms are cool, though, you know, whatever. Tabletop stand, anything you can find to get the microphone right where you want it in, in front of you, right? Important. We need some kind of pop filter or foam ball. Uh, this is a generic type. We could try a foam ball. People discuss these as a pop filter, and we'll talk about that for a minute because they don't, they don't work very well, so we'll talk about that. If you get a pop filter with a reticulated foam, something like this, it sounds way better than the net ones. And we need some headphones. Anything will do, it doesn't have to be nice as long as it has the connector that fits your stuff. And that's about it. This is everything we need, we're ready to go. All right, let's set up that microphone. Yeah. First, we need a good space. It really can affect the sound you can get out of a microphone. I know we can't always choose, but if you can, try to pick a space that's not a perfect cube. You can get as much absorption and stuff in there as feasible. At least four inch thick stuff, cushions, anything you can find on the walls and not out in the room. Now we're ready to begin. First set up your stand, or microphone boom arm, or whatever you've got. That's easy. Now install the clip for your microphone. This one should have been supplied. It's the correct style, I guess, right? Often there is a brass adapter in the clip bottom. This is a 5 ace 27 to 3 8 16 thread adapter. It's provided in case you need it. You need a specialized tool to remove this adapter. It used to be available readily. Here's one. Right? This tool was called coinage and it fits into these slots perfectly. Check that out. Yeah, you might be able to find one at an antique mall or in an old desk drawer. Anyway, get that clip on there so we can continue. All right, let's add the microphone now. It's pretty obvious. I guess you just snap it on there and you're ready. Now we'll adjust the height, which can really help with the sound. Get where you're going to be and move the microphone to you, not the other way around and then raise it until it's parallel to you, like the same height as your mouth. And then raise it a little more, like that, so it must point down at a little bit of an angle like this, and that's pretty optimal. Let's figure out the optimal distance. Your hand's about 75 millimeters wide, that plus or minus, you know, roughly. That's about three inches, and that's a good distance for dynamic microphones, USB or not. Let's talk about plosive control. The first method, which is probably the best, is the pop filter. You want it two inches away from a dynamic like this. It's a little different than with the condensers. That's two inches, 50 millimeters. So that gives you one inch on the other side to be three inches away, right? Let's test it. Pork chops in the porta potty. That's nothing. Pork chops in the porta potty. And that's the pop filter at two inches. Careful not to cram the filter too close to the microphones, then it won't work. Pork chops in the porta potty. See what I mean? We need to make sure the distance is good. And there it is. How about the foam ball instead? That could be a plosive control, right? Aside from picking up debris and making the highs a little quieter, these foam balls can be installed really easily and they're very inexpensive. 
The problem is that they don't really do a lot. Pork chops in the porta potty. Pork chops in the porta potty. They don't really do anything. A way to drastically improve this is to fake it by moving the ball forward, just like with the pop filter. Now there's some space for the ball to work, and it works pretty well. Poor chops and the porta potty! All right, a lot better. So that's a possibility. All right, a final way to deal with plosives is to use the microphone off axis. If you hold your hand in front of you and blow in that direction, you'll feel the air hitting your hand. The plosive blasts of air are just like this. They come out kind of straight ahead. So you can move the microphone out of the way, you know, dodging it to the side keeping it the correct distance and pointing at you, but you face forward. If you get this right, the plosives will miss the microphone, but you have to commit to this technique and do it all the time so you don't mess up, like I will when I demonstrate here. Pork chops in the porta potty! And off to the side. Pork chops in the porta potty! Pork chops in the porta potty! Okay. Now plug in the USB cable, of course. Computer side first, the cable that came with your microphone. There's also the possibility of USB-A for those vintage systems, yes. Oh, 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 yeah. Right. And then plug it into the microphone, finally. Now let's set up the computer. Time, time to, to set, set up, up the computer. computer. That's right, it's time to get Audacity running on our sweet audio editing computer system. Check out this high tech. Ooh. All right, here's Audacity. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? We should set up everything to make sure that everything's right before recording, because if we do it after recording, it's really hard to go backwards and fix stuff, right? So let's get it put together. Control P on Windows or Command comma on Mac will bring up this menu. You can also access this menu through Edit Preferences if you want to use drop-down menus in the PC and also I think it's Audacity Preferences in the Mac. The first tab at the very top is Audio Settings and that one's very important to us. And at the top of this is it says uh, Host. Normally in Mac there's just one setting. Windows we have MME which is very very old but very stable. Then Windows Direct Sound, which is superior. Then there's a third option called WAS API, and that's a specialized thing we don't need. If these are the only options, you would select Direct Sound first. And if you're having a lot of problems, you could try switching back to MME since it's like extremely universal. The next thing we need is the playback and recording device. You can select wherever you want the audio to go and come from. So in this case, we have our ATR microphone. We want to hear through the headphone jack, right? And recording, same thing, ATR USB microphone. Now everything is going to and coming from this thing, right? We're going to set the default sample rate. If nobody tells you what they need, start out with 48K. The interface is not your computer interface or the interface in this microphone. It's literally this interface, you know, these buttons and switches the, on Audacity right here. This is the depth or the range of the meters. Here's the meter for recording and playback. You can resize them, right? So we can see what we're doing. Isn't that nice? But the issue here is that they're going down below 100 dB now, right? We would really be interested in this area here. We want to see minus six and maybe minus three really clearly. And if we had hit zero and ruined, the, ruined everything, right? That's what we want. We don't need minus 60, control P, right? And interface and change this meter to all the way down, 36 dB shallow range for high amplitude editing, right? Cool, press okay, we're ready. Now, if you look at the meter, we can see that the center of the meter is minus 18 dB. We can see exactly if we're getting the recording level we want, and we can also see if we're screwing up. Minus 6 and minus 3 are very, very clearly visible. Next up, we need to get a good recording level. Let's do that right now. We can look at this meter, and you don't have to start recording. Like, you could just start recording, and you can see the level and think, oh, cool. But then you have this garbage recording you have to throw away, and you keep doing that. You can actually go to the meter and right click on it and press start monitoring. 
and it's working. And it also goes from this weird button. Now we've got an idea of where we are. We can just turn this up and down until we've got averaging minus 18. You can kind of see what's going on here, right? As long as we're averaging about minus 18, right? Then if there's some shouting, yeah, fool, then it's not gonna become a problem. You want the peaks to hit maybe minus six and you want to avoid them passing minus three. If, if the peaks start getting above minus three, you know there's an issue. All right, now we've got the audio level, good. All right, let's try it out. You ready? Start monitoring. We can look at the meter and see what's going on and turn it up until we're bouncing our minus 18. And now we got a pretty good minus 18 going right now. And if I shout, yeah, then we're hitting minus six, a little bit around minus six, and we're in really good shape. Pretty good. We can start recording. Hey, we immediately started recording. It was crazy, right? And now we've got our finished recording. All right, we got an awesome recording. And there isn't that much more to it, really. If you have any trouble, you get stuck or anything, just put something in the comments and I'll try to keep an eye out and help out if I can. If it's really weird, I'll try to make a video entirely for that or something like that. Just let me know, right? Okay, I'm glad you stopped in and I hope you get some awesome recordings.